Hey, what's up, family? What's up, family? Good morning, good morning, good morning. I want to say hello to all our campuses all over San Diego and in Oahu. God bless you. Uh, welcome back all our first, first-time first visitors. Thank you. If you're a first-time visitor, raise your hand. Let's give them a big hand. God bless y'all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> have a, have, let's all stand up. Let's all stand up. We are starting a new series today, and I'm glad all of y'all are here because it's a perfect time for us to start a new series and get uh, the rest of our life set on track. Amen? Amen. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you for what you're going to teach us today. Uh, Lord, we just pray for our, um, our walk with you, our relationship with you. Lord, we pray for our world. There are so many people suffering in so many wars, so many innocent people dying all over the world in 40-something wars going on. And we know that you die for every single one of those people. Uh, and you know all the things that are going on, all the families and the, the families that are being destroyed, the hopes that are being destroyed. But you, your, your death and resurrection provides hope for every single one of those people. So we lift all of them up to you. We present all those families all around the world to you uh, and pray that uh, your grace will be on them and that you would guide and direct them as they go through what they're going through. Thank you for our uh, church. Thank you for our church people and pray you... Lord, stir up in our hearts a desire to walk with you faithfully every step of the way. And we can love those people who love us and love those people who don't love us. And that we can be a bright light in this country, in this city, in our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Give someone a big hug next to you. Give someone a big hug. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, before we start... If you did not get one of these, I'm just take us just a second. If you did not get one of these, can you raise your hand? Can you raise your hand if you did not get one? I'm going to have the ushers really quick pass these out to everybody. This is very critical that all of y'all get one of these. Raise your hand really quick. In all the campuses, just take a second. Make sure everybody has one of these that the ushers uh, can go through the room real quick and pass those out. Pass those out. And if the rest of you could turn to John chapter 14. We got people over here, people upstairs. John chapter 14, but just raise your hand really high, really high, really high. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Okay, we want to get people, get those ushers real quick to get those to you. Uh, this is very critical. Today, we are going to talk about our discipleship pathway. Everyone say discipleship pathway. And we're going to help you get your next step in your walk with God. So keep your hands up real quick. The ushers are going to get to you. We need some ushers on the second level, third level. Okay. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, please keep your hands up just real quick. Amen, amen. Uh, I'm gonna start talking, but I just want you to keep your hands up. In, I want you to imagine if someone told you they were going, they had given you and gifted you a beautiful mansion, 8,000 square feet, 9,000, doesn't matter, it's big, you get that big, you know, you, you can't keep track of all of it anyway. Maid service, landscape service, chef, pool, gym, spa, six bedrooms, whatever you like, big screens or, you know, skylights overlooking L.A., blah, you can see the ocean, blah, 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 and it was gifted to you. And um, they said, we're going to go on a trip, and we're going to drive to L.A., and uh, on the way, we're going to buy furniture, whatever furniture you want to get. We're going to buy TVs, electronics. We're going to go to smart house stores. We're gonna, you're going to design your thing. And on this trip, sometimes things may happen negatively on the trip. It may rain. We may have an earthquake. Uh, it may have a mudslide. But eventually, we're going to get there. And everything that you experience on the trip to get to this mansion, by the way, the mansion is in a neighborhood with a bunch of other mansions. And all these mansions are all given to these people. And no, there's no gossip in this neighborhood. Can I get amen? amen. There's no drama in this neighborhood. Can I get amen? amen. Uh, everybody's happy. Everybody gets along. It's like family, right? It's very diverse. And it's all these kind of people. And on the way, you're going to experience ups and downs on your way. But as you go there on your trip, you're going to get really bonded to the people that you're driving with. And all the experiences you're going to have along the way are going to prepare you to live this life in this mansion, in this new gated community, because it's going to be a very different gated community. So this trip is designed to prepare you to live there. Can I get amen? I would hope that the first question you would ask me is, show me the way. 
How do I get there? Can I get an amen? Today we're starting a series called The Way. Everyone say The Way. I want you to read something. John chapter 14, verse 1. Look what Jesus says. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you may go. And the way. Everyone say the way. You know, Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And we'll say the way. Jesus says, I am the way. And we'll say the way. The truth, the life, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. We have designed a 10-step discipleship process for all of you called the Discipleship Pathway. If you could take this little card out that we just gave you and just look at the front cover. It says Discipleship Pathway. Everyone say Discipleship Pathway. And this pathway is a path that we have created here at the church to have, to, to have you go through in your discipleship development and your Christian maturity. It's one thing to get saved, and the next thing to say is, what do I do next? So what we want to do is, is today, in the next three weeks, walk you through the pathway. What I'm going to do today is give you a high-level overview of the 10 steps on the pathway. And as you come to church, coming to church is one step of those, one part of those 10 steps. But it's very important for us to understand what is it God wants me to do and how does, what does it God want me to become? What does it mean to spend time with God and to grow into the person that God created me to be? So we want to guide you on that today. We're going to give you an overview. Now, the goal for today is for you to ask yourself, what is my next step? Every single person has a next step. You never get to where you've done it all and you're done. Every single person has a next step. Some of these, next, some of these steps is ongoing, like, like walking with Jesus and reading your Bible every day and praying every day and sharing your faith. Some of these steps are ongoing. Giving and serving is ongoing. But every single one of us has a next step. And as you sit in wherever you're, all the campuses, all over San Diego and in, in Oahu and watching online, you, I want you to be asking yourself, what is my next step? And that you will go to the Pathway website. As a matter of fact, if you look in the back of this, this brochure that you have in your hand, it says, take your next step. And you go to Pathway at 52525. You can do that after you leave here. You can go there and start going around the, the website and figure out, what do I have to do next? There may be two or three things. You say, I got to do that. I got to do that. I got to do that. The next thing you do is just take one step. Everyone say, take one step. And because and, if, if God, if you, if God is going to do in your life what he designed you for, this is how you're going to find out. This is how we have designed for you to find out. Amen. Amen. So here's what I'm going to lead you to. Let me, let me explain the 10 steps and then open this up, open this up. And then these, these are the steps in a same order. Top left, a decision to follow Jesus Christ. First step is I got to get saved. You got to get in the game, give your life to Christ, and then the journey begins. Now you have the Spirit of God in you. Now you have the, the power of God in you, and you can actually walk through the rest of the steps. The next step is life class. We're going to talk about that today. Then after that's water baptism. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about all these 10 steps today. And then kingdom life, join a group, rock university, rock financial life, serve on a team, give generous, generously, and lead here at Rock Church. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to walk through every single one of those steps so you can just get a high-level summary of what they're about. And then you can say, today, I'm going to go on the website, and I'm going to figure out what do I got to do next. Just think about one thing. How many of y'all not been baptized? Raise your hand. Okay, we got a next step for you. We want to talk about that. So let's go through every single step. Can I get an amen? Number one, decision to follow Jesus Christ. Uh, Acts 3.19, repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. The Bible says that God created us all in his image to have a relationship with him. The Bible says in our sinfulness, we push God away and ruin the opportunity to have a relationship with God. But God became man in Jesus Christ. He lived the life we should have lived as our role model. He died the death we should have died as a ransom for our sin. And then three days later, he rose from the dead. God wants to have a relationship with you. And if you, at some point in your life, say, Lord, I realize that I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus died for my sin and rose from the dead. I want to give my life to him. This is 
your first step. When you meet people in your family, at your job, you have to understand that God has a plan for every single person and he gives us the opportunity to have a relationship with him. That is the first step. Until then, we're just trying to figure out, we're like blind people trying to find our way through life and we'll never find it because our, our, our way in life and the purpose that God has for us is eternal, it's spiritual. And it starts when we ask Christ to be our savior. And so if you're sitting here going, what is my purpose? The first step you gotta do is say, Lord, I f forgive me of my sin. Fill me with the spirit of God. Show me who I am. And now you're, you can actually take the way up to your mansion. By the way, the mansion that God has for you in heaven, which is not a physical house, but it's something spiritual and it's gonna be amazing. So here's what I wanna do real quick. I just want all y'all to bow your heads and close your eyes. All the campuses, bow your heads and close your eyes. There may be some of you right now, you're saying, you know what? I, I want to ask Jesus to be my savior. Well, this is your next step right now. And if you're saved, I want you to be praying for somebody right now who's gonna give their life to Jesus Christ. Lord, and I, and I pray that you would pray for people watching online because your family members may be watching online right now. You don't even know it. Or they may watch this later and you don't even know it and they can get saved. If you would like to ask Jesus to be your savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart. Pray, dear God, I believe that I'm a sinner and I believe the penalty of my sin is death. But I believe Jesus died and rose from the dead for my sin. Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. Fill me with the spirit of God. I surrender my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give those people a big hand. Come on, church. Well, guess what? If you just accepted Christ, you can go to the website and, and, and <laughs> click step number one, I got saved. And then you can get information about what? Reading your Bible every day, worshiping every day, come to church, serving, and then you can start getting baptized, go to life class, all the stuff we're gonna talk about. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, all of the rest of y'all, let's go to the next step. Now, here we are. Next step is life class. Life class, discover your destiny. Discover your destiny. Life class, um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand for those who should walk with him. Next class, next life class is next Sunday. And in life class, you're going to find out what the values of the church is, what the mission and vision of the church is. But you're also going to find out how God designed you. I was talking to a guy, I was, uh, my grandson had a baseball tournament yesterday and I was talking to a guy who was from another church. We were just talking and he said, I wanna start serving in my church. What do you think I should do? And I said, how are you designed? What is your gifting? Because if you know your gifting, that should guide how you serve. And so I would say that to all of you. When you go to Life Clash, you're gonna find out the history of the church and what it's about and what we're about, what we stand for, what we don't stand for. But you're also gonna find out how God made you. And if God made you to be a teacher, you don't want to be a counselor or a listener. If God made you to be a talker, if God made you to be someone empathetic and be a listener, you don't want to have a job where you have to get in front of people talking. If God made you to be a detailed person, you don't want to be a visionary person. You want to know, God, God how have you designed me and what is it that you have for me to do? So your next step is life class. Raise your hand if you have not been to life class here. Raise your hand. Very good. Next Sunday is life class, April 14th. Go there and find out. I remember the day I found out I was an evangelist. I actually had it written on a piece of paper, and I was walking out of a meeting reading the word. I can remember, well, I wrote it in my handwriting, but I can remember reading it going evangelist. Event. That was me. You need to find out you. Because some of y'all are screwdrivers trying to be a hammer. Some of y'all are saws trying to be a screwdriver. It ain't going to work. Some of you are Hondas trying to drive like a Tesla. It ain't going to work. <laughs> and some of y'all think you married a screwdriver when you married a hammer. Some of you think you married a kitty cat. You got a tiger, okay? You need to know. You need to know each other. And by the way, real quick, just a side note, if you're married or dating someone, but that person, you need to know them. Because if you don't know them, you're, the way you're loving them is missing the point. And you feel like, I'm doing all this and it's not, it's not working. You're, you're talking two languages. 
And so we, you need to know you. And, and, and by the way, if you're the person who's on the receiving end, maybe you don't know you, so you haven't even shared you with them either because you don't know you. Go to life class. Go to life class. That's a step. Number three, baptism. Go public. Once you ask Christ to be your savior, this is not a private thing. When you hear people say, well, me and God's a private thing. No, it's not. It's a public thing. Jesus didn't die in a closet on the cross. He wasn't, he wasn't ridiculed in, 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 in private. It was all in public. And, 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 and Jesus said, if you, if you deny me before people, if you deny me before people and, and hide me before people, I'll deny you before my father. It's public. Okay, so, so go, going public is, hey, I got to say, I'm going to go out and go to baptism. And I'm going to get baptized and, 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 again, go to Pathway 52525, and you can go get all the information about baptism. But we have baptisms all, every month at our church, and when you go under the water, something dies under the water. And then you resurrect to new life. And so baptism is a step that y'all got to take. By the way, let's come on, church. Come on, church. And when we have baptism, listen, bring all your family, bring all your friends to baptism and let them all celebrate you and tell your family, this is who I am now. That's basically the statement you're making. This is who I am now. I'm getting baptized. I remember I got baptized in a jacuzzi. There's no, there's no, there's no spiritual water. It's just water. It's symbolic of you dying to Christ and rising with a new life in Christ. Uh, in Acts chapter 8, verse 36, Philip was ministering to an Ethiopian eunuch, and he was explaining the scriptures to him. And it said, as they went down the road, they came near some water, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? He said, let's go, let's do it right now. Everyone say, let's go, let's do it right now. Uh, let's go, let's go. So if that's your next step, Go on the website, path, text pathway to 5255 to get the QR code in the back of your pamphlet, find out when the next baptism is, and go there. But it's on you to say, I'm taking advantage. I'm driving to my mansion. I'm going. This is, I'm going on the way, and I'm going to get there, and I'm going to take advantage of every experience on the way that God's going to transform my life to be who I, God called me to be. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. Number four, kingdom life be delivered. Kingdom Life. Kingdom Life is a series of classes, a healing. We have weekly hearing, healing uh, services, uh, encounter three times a year, freedom ministry. Uh, every single one of us is in a spiritual war, every person on the planet. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. When people oppose you, when people criticize you, when pe every person you interact with, the interaction is not necessarily with your body and their body, your mouth and their mouth. It's a spiritual thing. It's your spirit and how your spirit is responding to what God's and the devil's influencing you on and them. And even though you're a Christian, you say, well, I'm a Christian. I'm not influenced by the devil. Oh, yes, you are. Sure you are. By the way, watch this. How many of y'all in the last, I give you grace, in the last month have gossiped about somebody? Just raise your hand. Let's try this one more time. It's church. We're trying to be, I'm trying to be straight with you. You got to be straight with me. You know, but come on now. Come on. Just give me, tell me the truth. Now. <laughs> Elbow above the ear. How many of y'all in the last month, and I, and I say month, it could've, I, I could have said an hour, and I still would expect all y'all to say something. Okay? I could have said an hour. But I'm giving you grace. How many of you in the, in the last month, raise your hand really high, really high. Okay. Very good. Look around the room. It's everybody. Okay. And just, just to be really crystal clear, how many of you never in the last month gossiped about somebody? Let's see that. Okay. Okay. One person. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My bad. <I> was, uh, <laughs> so, God didn't influence that. Lust, pride, anger, deceit, jealousy. God didn't sexual immorality. I could just go down the list. God didn't influence that. The devil influenced that. We're in a battle constantly all day long. That's why you need to pray without ceasing. And when the Bible, when the Bible says pray without ceasing, I'm gonna, let, me, let me explain what that pray without ceasing means. It means fight the warfare without ceasing. It doesn't mean, oh, dear God, thank you for my food. Oh, dear God, thank you for this. Oh, you're so good. No, it means fight the battle. Because the demonic forces that are fighting against you, influencing you, whispering in your ear, are constant and they are deceptive and they are slick. 
and they're so slick, you don't think it's true. You just walk around, I'm just going to church. Oh, look at that. Hey, what's up, girl? Hey, and you just think you're just doing all this stuff, and you think, well, I'm not killing anybody, so I'm not, must not, must not be that bad. I'm not robbing a store. I must not be that bad. The devil's really slick. And so, so kingdom life, and there's a lot of times people will accept Christ, and your life is not powerful. It's not supernatural. You don't hear God's voice. Your life is, seems to be just like everybody else, except you go to church because there's still, there are spiritual strongholds that need to be broken. Strongholds are uh, incorrect, unbiblical thinking patterns. I, I don't believe this. I'm not going to pray for miracles. I don't believe in signs and wonders. I'm not going to. I'm not going to uh, uh, give. I'm not going to serve. I'm just going to go to church and be a, a religious robot. And, and th that's a wrong thinking pattern. God's not going to answer my prayers. God's not going to speak to me. Those are wrong thinking patterns. But those are strongholds. And because of that, your life doesn't spiritually bloom. You don't see miracles, breakthroughs. And so kingdom life is a ministry with many arms where you can go. As a matter of fact, on April 27th is our next encounter uh, event to come to that and, and have a breakthrough with unforgiveness for your dad, unforgiveness for your mom, uh, unforgiveness for someone who hurts you. And by the way, if someone hurts you and you're carrying anger and bitterness, guess who that anger and bitterness is hurting the most? You. You're carrying this burden. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. Forgiveness is not about the other person. It's about you. Because when you forgive somebody, you're, you're letting that burden off your shoulders. And so kingdom life is so critical for you to live a victorious life. And when you get to that mansion, you're free. You're not carrying all this garbage and baggage, emotional, mental garbage in, 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 into, that, into that neighborhood, into those relationships. So kingdom life, look what it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 4 to 6. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought, everyone say thought, into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience fulfilled. I go on all day about that. Let me just say this. The thoughts in your mind that you'll be able to have a thought in your mind, I can't stand the... She thinks he, I'm going to get, I, shut your mouth. But you you got to shut your mouth before you shut, you got to shut your thoughts before you shut your mouth. But the Bible says that the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. So it goes from the heart to the mind to the mouth. So you got to clean your heart out. And, and you can't do that by, by, you can't do that just by talking about it. You got to have the spirit of God clean you out. So kingdom life can get deep into your life and, and clear you out. How many of y'all, let's be honest, how many of y'all would love to be set free from some garbage that's going on in your heart and your mind? Come on, come on. Oh my gosh. Wait, keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Look around. Oh, look around the room. Look around the room. I, I don't know what the other campuses are. We got 80%. Listen, April 27th, be at the campuses. We got Kingdom Life, uh, the encounter. It'll blow your mind. It'll set you free. Come on, church. Come on, church. Amen. That hit a nerve. Join a group. Number five, get connected. Join a group, join a group, join a group. How many of y'all are not in a group? How many of y'all are not in a group? Raise your hand right not in a group. We want to get all y'all in groups. Uh, it, the, your small group and the community that you have in your small group, the relationships you will have in your small group, the interaction you will have in your small group will arguably cause more growth than you than anything else. And, and, and church is great, worship's great, individual prayers, all those are different stops on the road to the mansion. But when you have people in your life who know you, when you have people in your life, people will come and say, oh, the church is too big and I, I can't go there. Oh, no, no, how big do you think heaven is? So, so don't, that's, just, that's, just, that's just your cop out. But all you gotta do is get in a group and say, I got four, five, six, ten people that know me. And now, uh, now those are my peoples, and we go to worship together. Because when you get to heaven, by the way, if you don't like black people, white people, Mexican people, Mexicanos, you don't like Chinese people, whatever it is you don't like, they're all going to be in heaven. And so, and there's going to be a lot of them. So when we get there, you, you got to get used to it. So my, and, and by the way, God has blessed us to have diversity here that we, we're already ready, we're already prepared. Can I get an amen? But if you get in a group, you get in a group, and by the way, 
on, uh, let me get my date, let me get my date. April 21st, we have small group training for people who want to be leaders. We want to get a thousand groups. We need leaders. So April 21st, uh, go ahead and get it. Go to the pathway, sign up for your next step. If your next step is to get in a group, go to the pathway, 52525 or the website. It's on your, on your pamphlet and sign up for a group. Uh, number six, rock you, get equipped. Rock U, Rock University, Rock U. We are, we are developing a university internal for our, to equip all of you in your Christian walk. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. And he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Why? Those people equip the saints for the work of the ministry. The job of the pastors is to equip you for the work of the ministry. To equip you for the work of the ministry. So when you come here, you are coming here in theory to be equipped and encouraged to go do the work of the ministry. Whatever God's called you to do. So your next step is, okay, go to life class, find out what you are supposed to be getting equipped to do. If you're an, an evangelist or a visionary, and don't get equipped to be an administrator. You'll fail. It won't work out. I know the Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. It doesn't mean you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You're like, huh? There's a Bible, Ephesians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It does not mean you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You're like, what are you saying? Here's what I'm saying. God, God can do, you can do all things through what Christ strengthens you to do. In other words, I can't fly. He's not strengthening me to fly. I can't walk on water. Well, maybe, maybe one day I can. <laughs> And God's not going to, uh, God doesn't uh, contradict his own character, his own guidelines. So if God made me, to, made me to speak and I'm trying to do something he has not made me to do and called me to do and purposed me to do, I shouldn't even try to do it and it's not going to work out. Not, I, I didn't bless you that to do that. You want to be, you, you want to know what God has called you to do. And so you want to get equipped to what God's called you to do. And so that's why life class is important. Then rock you and taking classes there. Again, go to the Pathway uh, website. Number seven. Rock financial life. Be a good steward. God has given all of you a certain amount of talents, not only money talents, but abilities, and you want to be a good steward of those things. And look what it says in Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things that will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Rock financial life will help you uh, develop a budget and clarity in your finances. Probably the number one reason people get divorced is money. Here's what I would tell you to summarize Rock Financial Life. We have a class here that will help you get a budget. Get a budget. Get a plan. How are you going to retire? Can you retire? Are you able to enjoy what you're making? Are you able to budget what you're making? Are you able to be, be, be generous? The Rock Financial Life will help you walk through those things. The devil just wants you living paycheck to paycheck, and he wants you to be in chaos. And he wants, you to be, he wants you to be a servant to your boss. You should not be a servant to your boss. You should be a servant to your Lord Jesus Christ. And so God wants you to be... Now, am I saying God wants you to be uh, uh, rich? Nope. You're already rich. You just don't know it. You're spiritually rich. Because I, I can give you a million dollars and you blow it. And, and people who win the jackpot, uh, uh, the, the lottery, so many of those people are broke and, and miserable years later. Money will ruin you. I was talking to a very wealthy man, a billionaire for, for that matter, uh, about a month and a half ago, and he was thinking about how am I going to pass this on to my kids, and he has a multi, I told you the story, multi-billion dollar business. He says, money has a better chance of ruining my kids than blessing them. And so what he did was, he gave this Hobby Lobby, and it's all written, documented, so I'm telling, and he, and he, and he rooms here, he said, I'm not, giving it, I'm not giving my company to my kids. They all work for the company, and, and when I die, they just run the company as though it's somebody, it's, it's not theirs, it's God's. And if they decide to sell it, 90% of the profits will go to charity. <laughs> today, today, Hobby Lobby, 50% of their profits go to charity. Today. So he said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to have my, here's my point. My point is that money will ruin you. So you want to get the proper perspective, go to Rock Financial Life. Again, again, go to the pathway, and the pathway will tell you, uh, will show you next. Next, servant and team, pursue kingdom greatness. Mark chapter 10, verse 43. Instead, whoever has become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Um, 
I'm not going to ask you this, but I would ask all of you to serve. Your mindset should not become, I'm coming to church to be served. Because that's about, and matter of fact, when you go to work, it's all about me. When I come home, it's all about me. When I go to, when I go to the ball field, it's all about me. I was at, I was at my, my, son's, my grandson's baseball game, all the parents. It's all about my son. Your son ain't going to the major leagues. <laughs> Just forget about it. I mean, work hard, but look, this is, you know, little Johnny's eight. He, as soon as the game's over, he wants ice cream. He ain't even thinking about it. It's like, it's all about me. God said, no, no. How about it's all about him? And if you come with a servant attitude, so I would encourage all of you, go to, go to our, the pathway and say, I want to serve somewhere. And watch what God does in your heart. Because when it's all about you, your heart becomes like an empty hole and it's never satisfied. And everybody else is wrong. When you're a victim, because you're not getting what you want, because you can never get enough, Every victim has to have a villain. So if you have a victim mentality, you will constantly find villains in your life. It's everybody else's fault. When you become a servant, oh my gosh, whole, whole perspective changes. Number nine, give generously uh, abundant blessing. How many of you want abundant blessing in your life? Hey, open your hand up. Because you can't receive a blessing if your hand is closed like that. Luke chapter six, verse 38. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be poured into your lap, your bosom. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. We take offerings every week. The Bible talks about us tithing. That is God's formula. Tithing is 10% of your gross. It, it, is, it is the giving starter kit. In other words, you give and you realize that God gives you back. You're like, wait a minute. This giving thing is reciprocal. It comes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But if I hold on to everything, God's like, I can't work with that. I gotta, you got to open up. And, and, and something that you should try. Again, Rock Financial Life will help uh, open your eyes up to that principle. Lastly, lead at the rock. Everyone say lead at the rock. Lead at, the rock. lead at Rock Church. Be a kingdom multiplier. It's one thing to serve. It's another thing to invest in another person. The, in my, this is my experience, one of the most esteemed titles that a person has in my life has always been coach. <laughs> when I was in college, when I was in college, my coach wrote a letter to every NFL team. And I don't need to get into the letter, have a picture and stats on it. And I looked at it and I, I still have it. And he sent it to every NFL team every week. He said, you have to come see this person play. None of them came. <laughs> Until after the season. Make a long story short, I got drafted from a very small school. And he died last year. And I went to see him, and I rushed on the plane, drove, got in the car, drove, drove, drove to get to the, to the thing, and to the mortuary in time. And when I got there, they had cremated him. I didn't know they were going to cremate him. I said, I, I need to see him. Then they started referring to him by his first name. And I was like, who's that? They kept saying his first name, and I was like, uh, of course I knew his first name, but I always knew him as coach. Why? Is people invest in people. You want to do something for the kingdom? Go invest in somebody else. Please, please, you are going to miss, you are going to miss the greatest opportunity in your journey with God if all you do is come here every now and then and say, what can I get, get, get me? You're going to miss it. And you're going to have a whole warped view of what Christianity is. But if you come here, go through these steps. Say, listen, I'm in. Let's go. God's going to change your life. And everything you see us up here enthusiastically talking about and praying about and, pr and praising God about is that. It's that. 
is when you're walking with God and you start to see light bulbs come off and meet people in the airport, meet people at, the, at your job and be able to drop the gospel on them in a loving way, which we're going to talk about next week, and them go, oh, that's it? My wife and I go to certain restaurants all the time. And of course, I witness everybody. And two of the waitresses that I always see are coming here now. I hope that one may be here right now. I don't know if Don is here but, uh, um, and Paige, but to see them here. And then when I go and they say, oh, I've been coming. I said, how long have you been coming? I've been coming for two months. And to see, and people's, and I said, how is it? She says, it's amazing. I said, I told you, I told you. <laughs> you have to do that. Please, you, you are going to, church will be church if you do nothing else. I mean, you may come and say it's great, but the greatness and, and the goodness that you feel just from worship and the service, there's so much more to have. There's so much more to have. So here's my last encouragement. You know, I'm going to pray for you. Go to the Pathway website. It's on the back of your brochure. Take the initiative. Find out what your next step is, and let's take the next step. And here's I'm going to give you. That's one step. Next step is come next week. I know everybody's on their other week, other third, other fourth week rotation. Stop that. <laughs> Stop that. Come every week. Why? Because we got something new to tell you every week. I'm, I, I'm here. I was here, been here six weeks in a row. Sometimes I got to take off because I need sanity in my head. But come next week. And by the way, be on time. God's not late. And I know you may say, oh, I'm always late. That's not you. That's not God. I'm not, I'm not saying, let me say it this way. Be on time. Be on time. Don't, don't, don't speak death into your life. I'm always late. I'm always this. I'm always, always. No, don't speak that into your life. Say, figure out, figure out what it means to do things right and better than you're doing them now. Don't settle. Don't let the devil dumb down your life. You are, you, are, you are smart enough, talented enough to be on time, be prepared, ready to go. When you go to work, they're paying you. Be on time. If, you, if your day starts at 9, be there at 8.50. Don't come in at 9.30. You're stealing from God. So let's go. And, and, and cause why? Because God died on the cross for you. He deserves your best. This is the best we got for you. Let's, let's go with it. And God will, God will do 10 times more for it. Lord, I just pray you bless us. I pray for every campus. I pray for every person listening. Lord, you have given us your presence, the glory of God. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. And you deserve better from us. Our walk with you cannot be an accident. It can't be something we get to when we have time. It can't be something we'll get around to. Maybe I'll give if I have extra. No, you have to be our priority. Because when our, we're having a rough time and we're crying out to you, we're like, we want you to show up. And then we complain when we, don't, when we don't get from you what we think we should get from you. And you're saying, wait, where you been? So I pray we can give you our best. And you will more than bless us beyond we can ever ask or imagine. So I pray every single person in here, every single person, every campus, every single person watching online will get on the pathway website and say, what is my next step? And just take that next step and they will come next week and hear this whole series. They would hear the whole series and they would watch what you do in their life. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Come on, church. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for Pastor Miles, that message. Hey, would you all hang out just a second? I know we're in a rush to get the cars. I have something really important I really need to tell you about. If you'd grab a seat just for two minutes. I know I say that every week, but this week's extra, extra important. Um, uh, one thing, if you want more information on the pathway, you can text pathway to 52525. That's gonna explain everything that Pastor talked through today, all the different steps on the discipleship pathway. If you're ready, like right now, to take a step, and you already know, I gotta get baptized. I already know I'm going to life class. It's next week, by the way. Life class is coming up next Sunday. You can come at 11 o'clock. We'll take care of your kids and teach them about Jesus and rock kids. You can just go to uh, text next steps to 52525 and make that decision today. Make a step. Let us know what step you're taking. Uh, we have so many great things that you can, you can do and ser serve on a team, all the things that he explained. 
Um, also today, if you're returning from Easter, you're brand new, you're kind of looking around and going, I'm, 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 I'm liking what I see, maybe I don't, I have some questions still, I'm not ready for discipleship pathway or next steps. Uh, we're starting something brand new today called New to Rock Church. It's gonna be outside these doors in our community room. It used to be our, our bookstore. So head out these doors and go that way towards that big room there. There'll be someone there to welcome you. We're just gonna tell you about, about 10 things that we think are really important to us in about 15 minutes. No sign up, no nothing, no ask from you. Just if you're thinking, hey, I wanna know more about the Rock Church. What is this all about? What do you believe? We're gonna tell you about 10 things that are really important to us that we think you should know as you're making a decision. Do I wanna make this my home? I wanna call this my church. Can I get a good amen? amen? Awesome, so check that out today. Here's the very last thing. Um, we, we have some people that are outside that you may have encountered on the way in and they're still outside. They have some signs. They have some things that um, we didn't bring. They're theirs. They're on megaphones and bullhorns. Um, if you were here last week, maybe you experienced a little bit of that. But um, as you exit today, all, all we're encouraging you to do is don't feel the need to engage with them unnecessarily. Whatever they may be sharing or whatever you feel or whatever uh, they're trying to, to share with you um, is not our message, but at the same time, we wanna make sure that they know that, that we love the Lord, we love Jesus, and we wanna pray for them. There's uh, no ill will or, or hatred uh, directed towards them. And so if you can do your very best just to, you walk your car and have an incredible day and, and don't feel like you need to stand up on behalf of the Rock Church, and here's how we're gonna stand up on behalf of the Rock Church. And Jesus, we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. So would you bow your heads and pray with me. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. This is your day. It belongs to you, and this is your house, and we are all your people. And every single person, whether we acknowledge it or not, are made in the image of God, you. And our hope is that everybody would know that, understand that, and regardless of background or pain points or what we stand for, that we would all make that decision to say, Jesus, I'm gonna trust you and live for you and make my whole life about you. And so we pray that for our friends outside. And we say that, friend. We pray that they would know that we love you first and we do love them. And we pray that they would experience that as we walk out, just this peaceful uh, day, this peaceful church, this peaceful community. And we pray that they would know you more intimately if they don't and they'd experience the joy of who you are and your love for them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, God bless you, Rock Church, we love you. We'll see you back next week. Go check out New to Rock Church.